awful. Well, uh, the conversation's just beginning. We want to hear from you. Tweet us. Hit us up on Instagram at AMC Talking Dead. Go to Talking Dead's Facebook page. Please tell them my guests, Lauren Ridloff, Rick Beato, Lauren Cohen. Um, and uh, joining us tonight is Lauren's interpreter, Ramon Norad. Uh, very nice to see Ramon again. Um, all right, so um, uh, thank you all so much for being here, too. I, as I said, happy almost Halloween. Um, let's just get right into it. There's a lot to talk about uh, this episode. Um, just reactions from uh, the Internet. Cindy J. 1019 about um, Maggie and the, the child walker. That scene broke my heart. Poor Maggie. Uh, Shiv the Clicker says Maggie cradling that child walker but having to kill is so heartbreaking. Lauren Cohen is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, a huge response to that scene. Is there anything you can talk about filming? Yeah, it, it was uh, I, so many things I want to say about it. First of all, Jonathan Bergman, who played the child walker, is so good. And he was such a pleasure to do the scene with. It really, really made it easy. Um, he was a fan of the show. He was so committed to being a walker, um, to doing it all right. And just, you know, the way he's following me down the train. It was just, it was a beautiful experience. All in all. He really understood everything that we were saying with it too. Um, yeah, I just, I really, I loved doing it and I loved, um, everything it said for Maggie, you know, as I'm searching for Herschel and, and having this other sort of child trading one life for another. There was just a lot in it. It was a pleasure. Um, Sad. We haven't. We really haven't had many children. I mean, there was Sophia and the little girl in the beginning, and it's it's yeah. powerful when the kids are represented in the show. Uh, I'm so annoyed with myself because at home I have an actual se like season one Rick Grimes badge um, that I keep like in a vault in my house, and I just forgot to bring it, <laughs> so I don't actually have my uh, my actual Rick Grimes uh, badge, and. Um, and and I came as who? <laughs> you, I just want to say the best Maggie cosplay I've ever seen. Uh, I'm not good with costumes. <laughs> the best Maggie cosplay. I actually cosplay. gave Rick this one. <laughs> I was going to be in the vest. She did. And then she did. <laughs> it's, all, it's always so exciting when, the, when our show is like right up against Halloween. And like, oh, yeah, we get, to, we get to wear costumes. Um, before we go to break, please don't forget that we'll be live for the huge event for the series finale. Um, two, two Rick. Two Laurens. Yay! Um, Rick, what was your uh, what was your first impression of the warden after he gave his welcome speech? I can't wait until Negan takes care of him. <laughs> the same exact like, oh, this guy's just he's, he's toast. It's, yeah, it's it's definitely going to happen. Um, what is what is Pamela turning uh, Alexandria into Outpost Twenty Two represent? How cheeky was that? Very. Very. So cheeky. It feels I, intentional. It, it feels it feels intentional. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna have a word with her. Um, <laughs> maybe. Um, but uh, no, it was it was pretty bad. I think it was just sort of the stroll that breaks the camels back into action. Yeah. In this moment, yep. I think it was. Um, I don't know. I like it. I mean, Carol and Maggie talk about it, and this fact that these things she tries to do to break us up are the only way that she can be strong, and and yet it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So. I like the way that we revealed that in the episode too. Just sort of hearing the, hearing the directions and and then being like, "Hold on a minute, I know that place." <laughs> I've been. I may know that place. Have I been there? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Caitlin Nacon on Twitter, oh. who says, uh, uh, Co uh, "Lauren Cohen, does Maggie miss Enid?" Maggie misses Enid. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. I'd like to say hi to Caitlin. Hi. Yeah, Maggie has grown her hair since Enid left. <laughs> left. <laughs> it's like, no. It's, it's like, uh, well, I don't know if you watch no. the show. But yeah, it was, yeah. there's more than that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I know. Come back. Come here. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what could there happen? Like, you know, like we could reunite. Maybe we could reunite uh, Lauren Ridloff with the slingshot in the finale episode. Like, who Maybe. knows? what could happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, Caitlin will bring all those back. She could bring that back. Yeah. Did walking along the train tracks remind you of when Maggie was searching for Glenn? Yeah, I know. Such a such a happier episode. I, I think that was intentional. I actually never talked to the writers about that, but I felt like it was a parallel that was uh, intended. It was, it was so funny because I thought back, was that episode, was a flashback to that episode in this episode? Somebody will have to tell us. Um, but I saw it in my mind's eye if it wasn't. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I will find you. I will find you. Oh. It's just everything's everything has like so many 
accidental sentimentals. And the, and the, it's all just pulling us back to this, like, yeah. you know, 12 years of... There are, actually aren't collections of words you can say that don't conjure up some feeling of something another that, that thing. Something to a different point in time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could I chime in about the day? Please. Lauren, do you, you, you might not actually know this, but... So Christian and Melissa and I and Denise, we were all at Video Village when we were shooting that scene. And Lauren walks up and Norman's at the bike and you know how uncomfortable he is in these like moments of vulnerability and intimacy. And I mean Daryl, not Norman. Um, <laughs> and it was the cutest we have ever seen him on this show. And he kept like having the moment with you and then um, and then being like, okay, I'm done. And Denise and we're like, Stay there! <laughs> stay, no, stay there! And it was like yeah. it was it was one of our sort of like later days on the show, and it was so good. Well, eighty-seven percent of the people, Lauren Cohen, <laughs> can you talk about shooting this super emotional scene with uh, mm. Melissa in tonight's? Oh episode? gosh, it was like I keep talking about all these scenes like they're such a pleasure. I know they're full of anguish, but they really are a pleasure. Um, that was so lovely because Tanya McKernan, who directed that episode, is her second episode with us, and I love her so much. And um, we shot the the camera was sort of, set, sort of set up on another side, and Melissa and I did that scene, and we didn't embrace at first. We were just very close. We were having that conversation, and then the cameras moved around to another place. And at, I think it was even before we started filming the scene because all these things are sort of like coming into focus mm -hmm. that we're leaving the show's ending and these characters are all together in this group that we're not always in. And, um, and I just remember I just sort of let myself sink into Melissa and then we just sort of had the conversation and Tanya was covering it from this side and that we just used all that part of the scene and the thing because it's just such a rare moment to see... I don't know, I think to see these characters sort of just like admit this defeat, admit the weakness and admit the, um, I mean, in having a hug like that and admitting that you need to be held up. And yeah. I just like, I love Melissa so much. And I just like, that was, that was a, that was as much a Lauren and Melissa moment as it was a Maggie and Carol moment. And that whole reunion when, when Seth comes back and, 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 when, when Seth comes back and Christian comes back, and I just mix up everybody's names constantly, apparently. <laughs> um, it was great. It was just like we really, we really got to sort of embrace in there. And the time that we have all had together is just there's no replacement for, for what that is. And Yeah, we got to hug on screen. It was oh, nice. that's really nice. I remember you and I were backstage were talking like, can you believe how long we've been doing this? I it's know. Like crazy. Like, I know. You know, like it just, it's still, it's... You know, because we, it's easy to look at it from the point of view of the characters, but like, but the characters are portrayed by people who yeah. also had this uh, incredible experience. Number five, Aaron takes care of Eric. Number four, Daryl gives Carol a Cherokee rose. Number three, Maggie and Glenn's pharmacy run. Number two, Glenn proposes to Maggie. And coming in is the number one most romantic moment in the Walking Dead history, as voted by you, the fans, Rick and Michonne's first kiss. Welcome back to Talking Dead. That was the top five most romantic moments in Walking Dead history as voted by you, the fans, at TWDU.com slash deadlife. You got two of the top five. I did get two. Two of the top five. Yeah. Um, all right, so Lord Cohen is currently filming uh, Dead City, uh, which is the Maggie and Negan spinoff. Uh, what can you tell us about Dead City? I can tell you that on a <laughs> um, I was, I'm so tempted to give the funny answer, which is that those two have never been to New York and they really wanted to get a New York hot dog, hail a taxi cab, do the whole thing. Um, and that's also the serious answer. No, um, no, it's pretty great. We're just about wrapped on our first season. And um, it's it's been an emotion, most importantly. Um yeah, and I'm excited for everybody to see it. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I want to remind everyone that if you want to ask a question during... I was just lean back. Oh, you were so chill. Yeah. <laughs> I call this casual Rick. <laughs> um, if you want to ask a question during Talking Dead, send a video fan... It's a fan submission at talkingdead.tv. Share what you love about The Walking Dead or how it has impacted you uh, or your life for a chance to join us. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce this week's featured fan. Please welcome Alyssa from Columbus, Ohio, Yay! joining us. Hello. Uh, Excellent cosplay, also. Um, and uh, uh, wh who is your question for? My question is for Lauren Cohen. Hi. If, hi. <laughs> if Negan had only killed Abraham and not Glenn in the clearing, do you think Maggie would still have issues forgiving him? 
I have to say that it would be different, a little bit different. Um, but I also think Negan may not be around as long as he has been to have like given us this rocky road of um, of Rick not killing you when he should have. <laughs> Come on. Here you're here now. You can well, make it I'm right. I'm sorry. I just had stuff to do. I'm sorry. You know, I was one to ride on a helicopter. Um, so <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Alyssa. But before you go, uh, I want to show everyone this. This is the exclusive Daryl <gasps> Dixon um, wow. Geeky Tiki mug. It's available at TWDUShop.com. Oh That's great. Uh, for everyone watching at home. And everyone in the studio, I'm just going to go home with one. And then we're going to send one to you, Alyssa, as well. Thank you so much for being uh, a part of this incredible season. And thank you. And happy. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope. I hope. But every every I week watch I watch, it. and you know, like when people make it in, I'm like, yes, another episode. There's only a few left to go. Um, uh, well, we're gonna. I would love to talk some more. We do a talking, talking dead that we put on the internet. Uh, so we have some more questions for that. But we only have a minute left in the show right now. I want to thank you for watching Talking Dead. My guests have been the wonderful Lauren Ridloff. Rick Beato, Lauren Cohan. Uh, thank you also to Lauren Ridloff's interpreter, Ramon Norod. Please be sure to catch Rick at, at his live show at Park West Chicago, November 18th. Also, you have to watch his YouTube channel. It's educational, informative. He's had like Sting on, Brian May. I've learned more about guitar and music theory from this man, and I adore you, Rick Beato. Um, Thanks, also, Lauren Ridloff will be running in the New York City Marathon next Woo! weekend. Uh, check her out on awesome. Instagram for more info on that. Tune in next week. We're going to be joined by Kari Payton and Josh McDermott. Oh, man. Doesn't mean anything. Everything can be fine. Uh, we'll be on an hour later than our usual time following another brand new episode of Interview with a Vampire. There's only three episodes of The Walking Dead left. Please be sure to tune in. Stay safe and take care of each other. Thank you so much for watching. And happy Halloween. Have a wonderful and safe Halloween. Good night. I'm Chris. I'm Rick. Chris Hardwick. Rick.